Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the UR Pod, UC Drake. And uh, how are we, Baz? Yeah, going good and being well. Going good, being well. Very good. Um, so, continuing with our um, Super Coach Cross NBL Blitz previews, looking at Melbourne United this time, uh, who are playing tonight against the Brisbane Bullets. Who we got uh, highlighted on the big board, mate? They are stacked. Oh, yeah, they're going to be so good, so, aren't they? So, for me, it's looking for someone that doesn't rely on one category. Um, it contributes across the board. Um, because I feel like if I go with someone who I know gets sole points, like just say Chris Goulding, um, at some point with all those mouths to feed, um, he's not going to get them. And so I've gone with Luke Travers. Um, you originally um, told me about Travers and I was like, you know, I'm an Aaron, um, not a big fan. Um, but since then, my opinion's changed very quickly. Um, see, he does do a little bit of everything. And if he, based on how he went to start um, the preseason, if we see anything like that, um, you've got yourself a premium for 276. So he put up 11, 6, 7, 6 blocks, 3 steals um, against CBU. He also, against South East Melbourne, had a double-double for um, 42 points. So he dominated in those preseason games. He's probably going to be looking to to get drafted coming up soon or at least get on that Cavs roster. Um, and if he can put up some big numbers, um, I think that would be really handy. So that's why I've gone with Travers. Um, some big numbers, uh, cheap price, 276. So it'll cost you an import wheel. Um, but I think, yeah, he's in for a big year. I'm with you, mate. I'm sold on Travers. He was nearly the first one I bought in. Um, like you said, he can do a bit of everything. Um if he's not putting the ball in the hoop one night, he'll be getting boards, he'll be getting assists, he'll be steals, he'll be blocks. He he can he can do it all. Um and he's he's been backed up by Brad Newley. Um so he gonna be playing a truckload of minutes. Um Yeah. Well you can play him. You can play him anywhere, really, can't you? Oh, he's first time. Um, yeah, you got a few choices. Mm. Um I know that sometimes they'll try and play him in a guard position um over in Perth and um, that may or may not have worked for him, but yeah, he, yeah, obviously the choices are there for him, and yeah, obviously the stats are going to be there as well. Yep. Um, so both a big tick for Luke Travers. Anyone else that you like, or anyone that you dislike? Um, well, the point guard situation is interesting because I'm not a big fan of um, Kelly as a fantasy player. No. I think if you his role on the team is not there to put up stats, get boards, steals, whatever. Yeah. That's not his MO. He's there for a veteran presence. Um, that's what he was on that Boomer squad for. We watched him um, in the NBL before, and it's it's not pretty. I think he's um, at the back end of his career. I don't think he's going to offer much in the in the fantasy space. His his um, presence or his contribution to the team is far beyond the stats. It's definitely more um, that locker room presence and price at two fifty five. You're better to spend the extra 20k um, on a on an import, or you're probably going to could get the same output from him, um, the same output that he could give you um, for a, a cheapest chips player at 69k. So he's on my don't touch list. Um, I do really like Shay Ely as well, um, and he he didn't have some bad games for New Zealand in the World Cup, but again, he's probably one of those players where they're on court. Um, what they do on court outweighs their fantasy value. He has had some good games. I'm a massive fan. I think he's an awesome player, Shaley, but I'm not sure whether that translates to a fantasy friendly game. Yeah. Uh, interesting what you said about Delhi with his price at 255. Um, obviously, their NBL averages over the last two years have come into that. He was out last year, played the year before, but he's priced it more than Isaac Humphreys. So, um, Maybe his production's not going to be as low as you think, and he's only 7K less than Mitch McCarron, who you really liked. So it's an interesting one. Maybe maybe he's going to get the steals, and maybe the, yep. maybe the fancy-friendly high steals, low turnovers, hmm. is probably, maybe that might um, give him a fancy-friendly score. But yeah, I don't know. I just think that um, I'd probably rather spend an extra 20K on the import 
But he's priced at that for a reason, and obviously they've done the maths. But yeah, I just can't see him uh, having a fantasy friendly year. Jeez, yeah, don't uh, don't keep don't keep that receipt on me though. <laughs> we'll be holding you to that all year, I reckon. Um, and Shay Lee obviously ways. had the injury concerns with the concussions last year. So uh, although he had a really good World Cup, um, hopefully hopefully those um, concussion issues are behind him. I really like Shay Lee's game and agree with you that his impact is far beyond the stat sheet. So, um, yeah, I don't think I'll be touching him either. When uh, he played, they won. Yeah. Like, yeah, hundred percent. Um, and then when as soon as he got that concussion and he was out, they looked like a totally different outfit. So, yeah, yeah he he's um winning record to be unreal, I reckon. Yeah, he's uh, he's a really good, really really good NBL player. Uh, I'm pretty big on Ariel Huckporty. Um, only priced at one seventy two. Um, I I do quite like Melbourne's schedule. Uh, they've got two in the first week, Tassie in the second week, and two in the third week. So, um. I like that. Um, just just going to keep an ear out for Joel Wala Chul news. Um, he's he's looking like he'll be back a little bit quicker than first thought. Um, so I'm just going to keep an eye on that. Um, but I think Huck Porty can add some pretty um, some good value pretty quickly, um, especially if he's if he's going to be playing some starting minutes. Good rebounder, blocks shots, loves blocking shots. Um, does foul a little bit. Um, but no, I, I think he'll be he'll be a pr- pretty solid addition from the get go. If uh, Luala yeah. was still a month or so away, yeah, JLA will be an interesting one because mm. yeah, when he comes back, um, obviously he's priced pretty high, um, mm. and they do have a little bit of a lean patch where they do play um, one game for a few weeks in a row. So when he comes back, will be huge, but mm. he might help you at the back end of the season and. He's he's a monster. He's a beast. Just um, if you are going to pick him for one one game, don't pick it when it's at my state. Um, <laughs> and we all know why. Yep. Um, he did. What's he priced at? Three fifty three. Three fifty three. That's expensive, yeah. isn't it? So yeah, that's huge. So that's, that's how good he was. So kind of, yeah, that's similar to kind of your Alan Williams. So I guess that they're probably. Probably gives you an indicator of um, the season that Alan Williams had last year mm. with a heap of double doubles. That yep. um, JLA is probably going to give you a similar output to what he did. Yeah, and he averaged twenty ten two blocks in China last year, so he hasn't he hasn't dropped off at all. He hasn't lost a step. I'll tell you that much. No, for mine, Ian Clark will be an interesting watch over the Blitz. He um, completely dominated down the stretch in their last preseason game. Um, to get him over the line. He scored off 15 points in three minutes or four minutes or something like that. So um, but I don't I don't think that'll be him every game. Um I was I think he kind of went under the radar a little bit at Adelaide last year. Um just because of how bad they were. Um but his numbers were pretty similar to when he was in Sydney and he was rated really highly. So um he's priced at 226 with a break even of 39. But um, they've got the two games in the first week. So um, I'll be keeping my eye on him if they're running out of full rotation in the blitz to see um, what he's sort of bringing to the table. Yeah, I had, um, had a little bit of a look as well at um, Tanner Krebs. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. he's a, he's um, a Tazzy boy as well. And he he's um, probably comes with a nice resume coming from Come from Brisbane and also played a little bit in um, college career as well. Um, he's probably quite versatile. Um, played some stuff for Australia as a as a junior and um, maybe a new new scenery for him. Um, priced reasonably cheap. Um, he's priced at one fifty one. So he might also um, bring something a little bit different. He might be one which which may come out. Um, not as a star player, but he might put up some numbers. So he's one I'm keen to watch mm. as well. Yeah, interesting. Don't mind it. Um, had a couple of good NBL one campaigns. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he fits in in that system. He could be value. He could be value. He could mm. be. Righty, so we'll leave Melbourne United there. Yeah, and then, happy with uh, that. We'll cross the ditch over to New Zealand next episode. Hey, sounds good. 
Saya. So, yeah.